Hello, friends. Thank you for checking out Fort Worth Roots, a variety interview podcast based right here in Fort Worth, Texas. This is one of 10 episodes that we're releasing for the launch of the epi- of the podcast. Excuse me. For all of our show notes and social media links, go to www.fortworthroots.com. My guest today spent five years in the Air Force as an Arabic linguist. She speaks three languages. Give it up for Jennifer Castillo. My second guest today... He got his start in sales with a steel building company and has moved on to form his own business, Mr. Prince Whiting. Together they have formed an extremely successful commercial and residential real estate firm, and you can find all of their information at houseofwhiting.com. Let's start the show. UFO video, I guess, was released by the Department of Defense. Yes. Yeah. Isn't that creepy? That was also, yeah, Nobody talked about it. Yeah. It was like, hey, Wait. check this out. Yeah. Okay, it was on, on to the next But day. you know what, though? Nobody this is the reason anything. why, though, is because we're so, like, con- conditioned to, like, especially if you wa- if you saw that on Facebook. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of posts that they, like, those fake live videos where they have, like, right. oh, my God, look at the UFOs, but they're not real live videos. Yeah. So it could kind of fall under that category where people think that it's not real, but it yeah. was, you know, news headlines. But You're talking about something that just got brought up, uh, and I don't know if it was one of the dozen podcasts I listened to or what, and I don't want to get into politics. Okay. I'm serious, but talking with to that be- future but president here, she, yeah. is that right? Yeah, I want to go into office. I want to be a senator. Okay. You going to go independent or what? I'm not sure yet. Not sure yet. Yeah, okay. I don't want to label myself now because you there's shouldn't. there's things that I don't <laughs> agree with on either side. Right. So yeah. Well, I think everybody should run as an independent. I mean, the way it's set up, you're gonna lose. But why feed the beast? Right. <laughs> um, but no, what I uh, came across was somebody talking about the kind of the same thing you're talking about, like you know, putting out all this false information mm-hmm. and then just kind of sneaking the real stuff in between. Mm-hmm. Oh, by the way, here we go. Yeah, yeah. So, like, the JFK thing is, is a perfect example. Um, well, only because that's where they started coming up with the term conspiracy theory, mm-hmm. right? That's where that came from, was during that, that era. Okay. Yeah. So they started using that term, conspiracy theory, conspiracy theory. And they kept saying it. Every time you turn on the news, read the paper, whatever, oh my conspiracy God. theory. So by doing that, they were able to kind of float some stuff through the media without any, because anything you saw was a conspiracy theory. Mm-hmm. Um Fast forward to today, and you got people uh, yelling at uh, Carrot Top, Orange Face. What's the best nickname for Trump? Oh. (laughs) Anyway, but, you know, from the beginning, they've been like, racist, 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 racist. Yeah. And then when he does something racist, the word doesn't have any effect, you know? We can Um, go into real depth about everything, about all these times and all that. We can, I mean, like, I mean, we can go there because... I mean, I think that we're all desensitized. Or this, like, I think that what, like, especially what's going on right now with the the, um, the protest and what happened, you know, um, I think that there's. A, my brother brought up a good point. Example. Where's your brother live? He lives here. Okay. He lives here. Same building? No, 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 no. He's in Fort Worth. <laughs> okay. But the thing is, is what's like, his name? You want to shout him out? No, no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, but you know what's. What's interesting is you never seen an uh, animal get killed before on like on like on the headliners and media except for one, and then you really haven't really seen you're talking about other, hombre, aren't you? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Or you haven't really seen any other races get killed that get exposed like that as African Americans do. Yeah. And I think someone is setting that kind of stuff up to desensitize us. Certainly could be. Yeah. Just saying. And this is like, oh, it happens because you, as we know, yes, there are more uh, other races that get killed than there are African Americans, but we yeah. do see majority of African Americans killed. That's all we see. Yeah. So it's like, let's expose that and desensitize people from what's really happening to, you know, to my race and all that. It's such a hot topic too, man. I got some really, really good friends close to me, mm-hmm. dear to my heart, and. It doesn't matter how close they are. Everybody has an opinion about this. Yeah, and it's like if you're not a hundred percent on the same page as me, then we can't be we can't be wow. talking about. You know this. what's crazy is like 
I, I and I'm a different. I, I mean, I was on a call with a uh, with a colleague of mine that um you know I met in the corporate world in uh, Rhode Island when I was starting like a brokerage of MetLife briefly. But you know he has different point of views. But you know I was like, hey, call me. Like we're good. Like we're really cool on social media and all that. And I talked to him for about an hour today, sure. and we just had a great conversation as far as our point of our perspectives on this different. Um, you know, different things that are going on, and mm-hmm. you know, like we're gonna help his business out next week on because he's getting ready to start a car dealership. We're Perfect. good. Yeah. Everybody can't agree. I mean, it's fine, but as long as we respect each other and know everyone has a right of their opinion, um, I think the road would be a whole lot better than where it is today. But I think we're all coming in unity anyway. So for sure, fine. for sure. And I think conversations between people that's where it's at. I mean, yeah. that's what's gonna make the big change. Is people actually talking about yeah. it. Yeah. You have to talk about it. Certainly, everything. it's not on Twitter. It's not on Facebook. I've gotten into some nasty little exactly. conversations. I, I did my first time. I, I did my first, like, not rant, but oh. I, someone um, that I don't know, but he made a really uh, disrespectful comment. Hmm. Like, he was, um, you know, they should throw everybody. It was peaceful protest. I mean, Fort Worth, I love our city, man. We're Hell the yeah. only city that did not freaking have any damage or no crazy stuff. There was some fireworks that popped off, but that gotta, was it. I got to pause you just for a second. What? We did have one incident. Now Talking about the, the running very club? Very mild. The running club? I don't know about that one, but there was uh, an incident where there was a peaceful protest, mm-hmm. and they were crossing the West 7th Bridge, mm-hmm. and they... The city decided to shut them down. I oh, I was there. Okay. Yeah, I was okay. like, I walked there, and 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 they um they threw out the the um the stun grenades and all that that night. Yeah. Yeah, that was Sunday night. Mm-hmm. I mean, I have we have the view. We saw it from our We have the view oh, of that. Wow. Yeah. 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 Here for that. Two two blocks down from us. Yeah, from like it's right here. It's straight to happen on. So I can tell you what I heard, and then you tell yeah. me if that yeah, was yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So they said that the uh, the protest was marching that direction. Mm-hmm. For whatever reason, they're like, "That's far enough. Yep. We can't let them go any further." Correct. So they use the bridge as a choke point. Yep. Now this is what I'm telling you is what I remember the police department saying during like a mayor addressing the city Betsy. conference. What? Yeah, Betsy mm-hmm. Price. We're trying to get her on the show, by the way. If oh, you know okay. her, tell her I've been sending her emails. I don't know her personally, <laughs> but I do know a couple people that are really close with her, like the economic developer. And yeah, you know what's crazy. Whatever. I don't know if I should even say this, but I'm going to say it. I've got her personal cell phone number. Call her, man. I know. Text man. her, call her, FaceTime her. You better blow her phone up, man. <laughs> Ta- walk me you through want me to call how her do you? Th- how do you think this conversation is going to go? Hi, Mayor Betsy Price. I know you don't know me, but I just came don't by say your personal. I know you don't know me. <laughs> <laughs> say, hey, I'm, you know, I'm with the, the you know, the, um, the Roots, Fort Worth. Boom, that's Fort Worth right there. She loves Fort Worth. We that's all love true. Fort Worth. She really does love Fort Worth. You know, this is marketing right here, man. This is, that's okay, right. it's a sell. So, Make that call. Hey, I'm with Ruth Fort Worth. I love what you're doing. You know, like uh, I would love to sit down with you or what time would be best for us to sit down to show you what I have to offer as far as, a, you know, a, a hot podcast that's coming up. I'm just going to call have her, you man. call her and be like, this is, this is Prince Whiting. I'll call her. And, we'll call. and, and I am representing Fort Worth Roots. And yeah. here's what's up. I'll FaceTime her. I'll call her FaceTime her. <laughs> Trust me. Well, I, you know, with everything that's going on, uh, I'm definitely cutting her some slack. I'm trying not to be too aggressive with it. So I think time well, is right now because she, I mean, all, all platforms are great platforms for her to speak. That's very true. Just saying. But that is a busy, busy woman. Absolutely. And like you said, she does care about the city. It's evident mm-hmm. in what she does. Mm-hmm. And uh, if people are not impressed by the way she's handled the coronavirus response, know, right? plus all the riots, and even they're this. not paying attention or they have a bias against right. just people in general. Agreed. Uh, but <laughs> back to the, the bridge, because that's where we left off. So they're going across. Mm-hmm. The city says, okay, that's far enough. They use right. The bridge is a choke point. That's where I, I've walked that and I've seen how they I want to see that video, by the way. I don't have like a actually well, I not, do well not right now but no not now yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I actually have the video for it very cool yeah. um, so what the police said is they told people to disperse that's it shows over go home and they said at that point a majority of people left and then there were some that didn't and then at some point somebody started chunking frozen ice at them oh I didn't know that. yeah the at that point one of the officers got injured it struck him in the elbow wow so there was an injury there there were three total uh, so one was because somebody struck him, mm-hmm. and the other two are because they tripped and fell. Damn. That's not funny. That's but embarrassing. It's, yeah, it's embarrassing. Yeah, you know, I wouldn't want to be the big bad dude in the riot gear and, oh, how, how'd you get hurt during the riot? I'm not saying anything. I fell. Yeah. I was you know. playing basketball other than but, working out. So, anyway, three injuries total. Um, and then, so they, I guess they got it broke up. Mm-hmm. A couple people snuck past. I mean, it's a bridge. Mm-hmm. 
You can still get around a bridge. I don't know how they got around unless they went underneath the bridge. Maybe they swam. Maybe they did like some MacGyver stuff Something. and like shimmy down the. Is there like a place you can shimmy? I mean, you can no, go down. That's a long jump. It's, 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 it's a long it's, bridge. That's yeah. rough. I run down there, so I'm yeah. I'm pretty familiar with it's rough. it. Um, huh. But yeah, so anyway, some of them got through, smashed up some windows over there, Montgomery Plaza. I don't know which buildings, but they said it was Montgomery one. Plaza got hit. Yeah, it was. Oh, it, I know it was like that run. That the third. Running. I forgot the Sorry. name of it. Fort Worth running or something like yeah, that. Yeah, they're right on the corner. Yep, right next to um, the breezeway. Yeah. Oh no, they're on the far corner. They're, they're the next to Tiffany Streets. That's how I know because I'm. Uh, yeah, that's, that's found you out. You got sweet my, tooth my for Tiffany's, huh? No, actually, shout out to Crumble Cookies. <laughs> Crumble cookies? Oh my <laughs> God! Have you been there? Uh uh-uh. Oh my goodness! What's the deal with crumble cookies? Man, it's the devil. They do awesome marketing, by the way. They amazing oh, yeah? marketing. Oh yeah, marketing. little yeah. pink boxes. And it's like the experience okay. that you get. They even if you buy one cookie, I'm telling you, you get a nice little pink box, little and they get you around <laughs> there to hand it to you. I'm like, damn. <laughs> So it's just a great it's experience. Worth a five dollar cookie. Jennifer, you it's definitely the, worth the five dollar. Pink boxes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Now, I got some uh, friends in Abilene that own a donut shop. Okay. And they brought the pink boxes from California. Is that a pink box California thing? I think donuts in general are a pink box thing. I think so. Yeah. Are they trying mm. to chop into that donut California pink box market? Smart. Yeah, absolutely. That's smart if they are. I think they originated. <laughs> From like Arizona, West Coast. Well, there goes my whole theory. Huh. Maybe not all pink boxes come from Cali. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> Tell me the name of that place again. Crumble. 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 I'm telling you. You get excited every time down. you say it, your eyes get I haven't bigger. been in a while. I'm not going. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm back on a diet. We just pay for a nutritionist and a, um, and a back on meal plan. Again. Yeah, we're doing plant based again, so I'm out of oh, it. Oh, dude, I tried that. Really? How did it go? You didn't like it? All right, so if I'm being 100% honest, I okay, I went completely vegan yes. for okay. a month. Okay, wow, you nice. felt good at while you, like, after that week, right? No, brother. Oh, my gosh. That's what we're eating, just so, salad? So that's the thing. I, w- I wasn't doing it right. Yeah. I know that now, and I'm planning on trying it one more time. Okay. But I did give it a month. I didn't lose any weight. In fact, I think I packed on a couple pounds. What were you eating? <laughs> what was your like, what? anything as long as it was plant based? Oh my oh, gosh! So yeah, like, so I could get away with like French fries and you were vegetable oil. That's, that's I was carbitarian. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, I hadn't heard that before. That's yeah, good. that's why because you end up eating carbs because you can't eat meat, so you're trying to satisfy yourself. Yeah, yeah. All right, so tell me about that. I mean, what you need to do is just like the way I I lost mm-hmm. 15 pounds in probably what about a month, yeah, month and a half. Month and a half. And I'm all about flavor. Yeah. And I don't like salad. I mean, I'll eat salad every now and then, but the way that I did it was we juiced a lot. Okay. That's one key thing, and that cleanses you out. Do a juice, you know, every couple of times a day. Um, you know, I made a lot of potatoes, mm-hmm. sweet potato and even red potato. But I just learned that any other potato than red potato, it's not bad for you, but it's not healthy for you. Well, it's like, heavy in starch, right? I mean, that's, yeah, that's kind carbs, of a no-no. You know, all that. Yeah. But red potatoes are okay though. No, no, no. no. So the the taro sweet and sweet potatoes. Oh, sweet potatoes. Yeah. What was the other one? Taro. Taro. It's, it's like a root, so people use it like as a potato substitute. I just learned that. Oh, okay. So it's not a legit it's not, potato. It's not a legit potato. No. Okay. So any potato, even like the, the red, the white, the yeah. purple ones, Yellow, those are the bad ones. No go. Um, but sweet potato is okay. I'm not yeah. trying to drop the wrong pronoun on that root, so yeah. I won't call it a potato on accident. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, like the potatoes are good. Um, that's what I. Ate. Lot or made a lot of and lentils was a great um, yeah that's protein, protein. Yeah. yeah um you know, a lot of fruits but yeah it was a good experience good I think if you're doing it right it's it's okay I just was not and were you feeling was, weak and oh god oh my yeah. god just <laughs> so now what I'm I, I then I tried carnivore for a little bit and you know I'll, whatever I guess I'm just trying to the get keto in where diet I fit in. the keto yeah, yeah. You watch game changers. No, is that Netflix? It's Netflix now. Yeah. Okay. Go check it out, man. Let's check it out. That and I always say Calicious, uh-huh. but it's called Cal- Cowspiracy. Cowspiracy. You know which one I saw that just freaked me out to no end? Um, what the Health? Yeah, oh, yeah. I, haven't, sure. I don't think I Don't watch, watch it. Mm-hmm. Don't watch it. You won't be able to eat anything without feeling bad about yourself for like the next <laughs> That's how I feel about Cal- Cowspiracy. Yeah. And then the way that they broke stuff down as far as stats and analytics. Like sustainability man, of the like, meat. Yeah. I mean, the cows, as far as how, like gas, you want to talk about pollution? The, 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 the cattle, I forgot what percent it was, but it was like 
90 to 10 percent ratio or something versus any all, all the, all the other emissions. all the emissions and everything in the world Cars cattle factories. destroys that by like ridiculous number huh yes because I could argue that, that I gas. just don't know anything about it it's like yeah I, I, there was something that came out recently, and I wish I could regurgitate it right now, but uh, cows, regurgitation. Mm. Anyway, <laughs> um, but they were saying that, like, the, the gases that they emit might not be as destructive as we were previously thinking, but that's, I don't know. I, I'm probably just making all that up. But you're right. It's a problem. Have you ever been to Mule Shoe, Texas? I think it's Texas. Yeah. Mule Shoe? Mule Shoe? Mule Shoe. Oh, no. <laughs> no. Oh, man. All right. So if you're going from, like, Lubbock, you know where Lubbock is? Yeah, that's, you like, know, West Texas. It's up in the Panhandle, but, yeah. Yeah. It's still like considered. Amarillo and all that. Yeah. yeah. yeah Texas Tech About area. Three hours south of Amarillo? Two okay. hours? I don't know. Something yeah. like that. Maybe only two. Um, do you know where Clovis, New Mexico is? Yes. Okay. So if you go from Lubbock and you are on your way to Clovis, New Mexico, you are going to hit this cow fart cloud that is about five miles long and what? so what? thick you can taste it. Oh, really? Bad. So bad. Never and it's just cattle life. farms oh as far God. as you can see. And it, I mean, you know, with, with you talking about the cow flatulence and how it's bad for the environment, yeah. I would probably just sit here and be like, mm-hmm, sure, crazy man, but I've driven through it. So I can definitely see how that would be a problem. Damn. Okay. So anyway, I don't, I don't know. think we'll ever drive. Yeah, I don't know why you would. I don't, I don't know why. <laughs> Unless one of our ch children go to uh, Texas Tech or something. Yeah. I don't know. I had some family out Other there in Clovis that. for a little bit. And that was kind of the, the way to get there was go up to Panhandle and over. But. Yeah, 87 to whatever. <sighs> I don't know. So before we got started, y'all were telling me a little bit about House of Whiting. And that's been going Mm -hmm. for about three months now. Yep. And y'all started this off at the best time best possible. possible time. Yeah. Yes. Right? Yeah. Because so here we are, here we are, beginning of June. So what was going on when y'all started House of Whiting? This was right before the coronavirus hit, and we had all of these amazing marketing strategies, and we had this awesome business plan together, and we really had to just, you know, overcome all of that and adapt and just change up our marketing and figure out what we're going to do next yeah instead of really just saying oh we're, we're screwed like a lot of our peers did and say you know there's nothing that we can do and i mean we we just um you know deviated from that that main plan and mm -hmm. yeah. did yeah. a pretty good job Any action is better than no <laughs> action so good yeah. job as yeah. far as like what we have going right now and the opportunities and a good rule of thumb in sales is that whatever you do today is going to take typically about three three months or so for that to close or for that to kind of blossom. Yeah, it's so especially true in our industry. As you notice, it's three months, you know. But we we were closed. We're still we still closed plenty of deals in in the midst of that um, uh, in the midst of this pandemic. And um, but it's definitely been a eye opening, you know, for us. Um, and it was we lost a lot of money, especially starting out starting out a business, we were expecting a ton of deals closing and we had some great marketing strategies that will just separate us from our competition, which we still do, um, but nobody has seen what we have yet as far as the marketing that we in. have. Yeah. So the, the three-month period that you're talking about, is that, hey, how's it going? This is Prince Whiting. Uh, I want to tell you about a thing. And then you're saying from that point, three months later, you got to sell with the contract, or well, so typically, okay. um, whenever you start working with a home buyer, it takes six to eight weeks to close on a sale. So that's the whole um, home search process. Okay, so you're so. you're talking about person to or yeah. from you to so, a uh, so from person you to so, at home. Yeah. So okay. whenever they first get the idea, hey, I want to buy a house, they start researching on the internet, and there's a whole process to right. to where you know these are the steps typically okay. taken. So it takes about six to eight weeks before you know that whole home buying process, and then you have the financing portion, which you know could be anywhere from like thirty to forty five days or That's more. When you start crossing your fingers exactly. and burning yep. the sage yes. and <laughs> saying <laughs> your prayers, and it's just like I mean, we've had we had six deals under contract. Uh, right right before COVID. Yeah. And, well, we have more than six deals, but we lost six deals right when COVID hit. Yeah. And, well, yeah. how much of that was from, I mean, the stock market went, property values probably fell. Well, I know you mentioned, you know, you asked if we did commercial. So some of the, about, about four of those deals were involved 
commercial deal. It was a commercial developer. A restaurant owner. He had to shut yeah, down his restaurant, so there was no way for him to qualify. And Damn. then there's another lady yeah. who owned. Do I know the restaurants? Yes, you do. Who was it? Let's not talk about Oh, yeah. we can't. No, no, no. no. Yeah, Let's not. Yeah. yeah. But I know. But you know, I'll yeah. tell you off market. Because they're, they're off the 7th. Off, of off seven. Seven Street. Yeah. yeah. Okay, man. That's a rough neighborhood. That's a rough neighborhood. Um, So I, I, I can mention the ones I know about. Um, Tara, <laughs> I know y'all didn't have nothing to do with that one. No, that man. closed down about, let's see, I moved in. So we used to live down on West 7th, and we were down there in January. I fell in love with Tara. Tara is a, for the listeners that don't know, a Mediterranean restaurant with a bomb-ass buffet uh, during the lunch hours and just exquisite Mediterranean food. Mm-hmm. It was amazing. I love that place. I was getting so fat. I put on 20 pounds whenever we moved down there. Man, I'm not kidding. You know how it goes. Rodeo goat, uh, what Fred's, Tara. I mean, those were my worst ones right there, but, yeah. I mean, everybody else. And then there was a restaurant that opened up. Man, they spent a year redoing that uh, winery or vineyard or whatever. Are you talking about that's in the foundry? Or uh-huh. No, they're still open over here. It's on West 7? Yeah, they were right on the corner across from, I think it's called Local. Um, it's about American Garden? Or American? It's across from that. It's across the street. Oh, I don't know. I, I've never been. Anyway, it was, uh, it was a place out of Atlanta, Georgia. And they spent a year, maybe longer, making up this building because it used to be a uh, a winery. Mm-hmm. They gutted the place, redid it. I mean, it it was awesome. Uh, the food was incredible. It was slightly overpriced for the area, not by much. Yeah, the music was kind of not right for the demographic there. Okay, um, but all in all, it was an amazing place. And they were open for ten weeks. Wow. Tara was open. Uh, in 2009, mm-hmm. so Tara and Pop's Safari Bar are the only two places that were around whenever all this West 7th construction started. And you come a little further this way, Montgomery Plaza, right? but all that stuff like deep down in the heart of it, like where Varsity is and all that yeah. stuff, the only two places that were actually there when all that started was Tara and Pop's Safari Bar. I've never heard of Pop's Safari Bar. I haven't heard of it either. What do they have? Gotta spend more time. Are they seven. still is still there? Oh, yeah. This dude's crazy. This guy did uh, some kind of, uh, I want to say it was like Travel Channel or Discovery. This dude went all over the world doing stuff. That's that's Pops. And oh. I, I need to go talk to that dude. He's an older gentleman. Okay. So I probably need to hurry. <laughs> yeah, but uh, <laughs> I, I've talked to this dude, and he's just smart as a whip, dude. He's, he, he's got so many stories. He's good for podcasts, for sure. Podcast, yeah, or a movie. You could probably make a movie about this dude. Uh, if you walk into a shop, though, so it's a cigar shop. Okay. Oh, I know the cigar shop. Yeah. I just didn't know. Okay. It's got a badass lounge. I mean, all this crazy stuff on the walls. It's like a TGI Fridays, the stuff on the wall, if, like, everything actually meant something. Huh. Is they, and they have, <laughs> so it's, a, it's a food? Like they have, it's a restaurant? No, it's, uh, so it's a cigar place. Okay. They've got a big-ass walk-in humidor. Um, big lounge areas. I mean, do you like wine? Yeah, I do. Yeah? yeah. What's your favorite? I like, um, we've been drinking a lot of Riesling. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Riesling. I'm more of a dark red yeah. guy. Okay. Or dry red. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so they've, they've got a nice little wine bar in there and um, lots of cigars and all that. But anyway, so that place, Tara, those are the only two that are, that were, and Tara's gone. Mm-hmm. So that's gone. Uh, Atlanta, Georgia place is gone. What else is closed I've up? I've never been there. to the Atlanta, Georgia place. I wish I would have known about it. Waters. Did y'all ever see Waters? Yeah. That's that's closed now, too? Waters is gone. But that's the owner. Concrete the Cowboys there now. Okay, that it was Waters. Damn, that's mm-hmm. bad. So Waters okay. is downtown now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, that used to be my spot. Really? Okay. And then, you know, and then Varsity. I don't know how long Varsity's been there. They've been there forever. But anyway, yeah. I just took us way, way off topic. That's cool. So you got uh, a couple of businesses, a couple of restaurants that were downtown. Yep. And this guy folded up on you. Yeah. Yep. He didn't have a choice. Yeah. I mean, he wasn't, it wasn't his restaurant that, that shut down. It was like just, he, we were involved with another project, another development that he was interested in. Oh, okay. And his restaurants, he couldn't make any money off of his restaurants because yeah. they were shut down. So he had to back out. Okay. So the restaurants are still there. Yeah. They're, yeah. Oh, restaurants it's, it's, still they're, they're well known bars. Okay. Well known bars. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. He just couldn't get the financing because obviously he couldn't have any business. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's so, not good for y'all, but I'm glad right. to hear that. Because whenever you said that initially, yeah. probably because I'm just 
talking more than I'm thinking, but I thought you were saying that two restaurants downtown. No, 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 no. Okay. No, you just own multiple restaurants downtown. Yeah. Right, right. That's All right. Really, that's just like the cause and effect. Of so was that the first COVID casualty? I mean, it all happened at once. Yeah. yeah. In that same, like, like two days, two, yeah. like two day time span. Like, it was yeah. really that fast. And there was a lot of yeah. fear, a lot of insecurity. People just yeah. unsure. So they decided, okay, no, now is not the right time. We're just going to back The estate market is all about yeah. trust and feeling exactly, good about yeah. your investment. And yeah, yeah. So everybody's trying to play that market and get every penny they can what, out of that. What we observed, though, is it really, the commercial fell off. Like, commercial was a wrap. Mm -hmm. But residential... We lost deals in residential as well, but or we had sellers that you know wanted to wait until the you know the, the you know it clears out. But we also found what our, this is where our marketing came a big in. Big buyer pool. We found a huge buyer pool because they're, if they're out looking for a house, they're serious. We were still able to show property. Is that because the property values had gone down? The interest rates actually. The interest down. rates were really low. That's right. And then also, I mean, they just were builders were offering were a lot serious. of incentives because yeah. they weren't sure what was going to happen. So they said, "We need to get rid of our inventory right. now." So they just do major incentives. So yeah. we you were can able to this because, like, we even did videos and other realtors. Oh my god! Like, where is this place at? They didn't even know. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean by that? Just so, like, go ahead, talk. Say. So um, Prince does a lot of marketing online, and so he puts, you know, does a whole bunch of videos of where we're at, what properties we're showing, what mm -hmm. communities we're showing. And it's funny because we have a lot of realtors that start commenting and asking, where is this at? And obviously, we don't work for realtors, but for people who are trying to buy houses, realtors right. are not going to buy from us. So, you know, we just simply, like, either disregard those comments or delete. <laughs> <just like, laughs> <laughs> it's not personal. Don't need them digging into your Right, your right. And yeah. Yeah. personal. But yeah, that's what we found though. Is although this did this pandemic occurred, we still were able to kind of change our find marketing strategy and find yeah. opportunities instead of just giving up and just sitting on our ass and like, oh no, we're we're, we're doomed. We're starting our business and don't get it twisted. I was I was afraid, but yeah. I have a very strong counterpart, strong minded counterpart, and you know both of us are strong minded. But like with us together, we just found a solution, found and made it, created a different marketing plan. And snipe that demographic that we can, you know, make, you know, help out that we can assist. So the turnaround point was finding this this uh, buyer's pool that you're yes. talking about. Mm -hmm. You realized that the market had changed, so you adapted and exactly. you started spearheading that rather yep. than chasing a marketing strategy that you made prior that to coronavirus. Because right. see, this is the it's thing: awesome. is like, so I, I mean, my like, if you, if people who know who I am. Um, they'll look at me as like a luxury real estate agent. Okay. Okay. So it was it, a lot of times I get people get the perception that all I do is sell like million dollar homes or whatever, like big houses, beautiful homes. Mm -hmm. So it was very difficult, but I actually had Jennifer that, you know, was able to be by my side and, you know, she's, she was able to find or have clients to where I would go out and do the videos with her, and we're all in this together. So I was able to pick up some buyers that way, just because like I'm able to help you. Like, where look at this. Like, we just yeah. did one about you know we did an inspection and there was a leak mm. on you know there, and it was a actually it was a final walkthrough, mm. and we found a leak. And luckily, we were able to you know catch that before our our buyer, our first time home buyer, purchased lives in the home, deal. Yeah. and yeah. Then you know have to wait for warranty, which takes several weeks to take care of and all. Right. So, yeah, like we were able to, um, I was actually able to kind of um, capitalize on that opportunity. Yeah. And, um, you know, especially because jumbo loans, there were many banks doing jumbo loans. Oh, so if you're in that higher price point, there's a certain amount of reserves that you need to have in the bank and the loan is structured differently. So if you can't get those loans, then you can't buy that house. Now, what is a jumbo loan? I haven't heard jumbo that term. Jumbo loan. So um, it's, a, it's a loan for homes that are in a higher price point. Okay. Yeah. So, so, like, what's the what's the bottom what's the floor for that? So, I say over five hundred thousand. Oh, I think it's yeah. five twenty, five twenty plus. So, I don't need year. to really worry about a jumbo <laughs> loan right now, right? I mean, you will be having to in the next couple couple months or a year or so. Yeah. Find you a jumbo, jumbo, jumbo loan. Oh, three times with the jumbos. <laughs> this, uh, podcast up in there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Fifteen million dollar uh, floor for me. I don't want that triple jumbo. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Man, if I'm universe. talking about jumbo, the only thing we're we're, we're discussing dinner plans. That's <laughs> jumbo shrimp. Oh, that sounds good. That sounds good. 
I was thinking about uh, what I'm going to do for dinner after this because we're down here in downtown Fort yeah. Worth. So for our, our listeners, uh, I guess we should tell them the, the venue that, that we're at here. It's not a venue. It's a high dollar. Uh, yeah. it's, oh, let's not call it high dollar. Let's call it upper class, fancy, really damn nice apartments. <laughs> That's what sold me. Yeah. Well, uh, Prince gave me a little tour. He was, he was trying to decide which one of the filming locations would be best. Now, with this podcast, it's always going to be a traveling podcast one way or the other. And so each one of the episodes that we do is going to be a different um, space. So Prince had taken me around the property to, to ask me which one of like four locations would be the best. We, we, we settled on this one here. It's beautiful. But, um, man, the rest of the property was that's very nice. That's I, see, I see why you're here. Yeah, mm -hmm. very nice. Pay for it. Damn. Yeah. Um, but... You're in a great spot because, like you said, seven minute walk that way. You're on West Seventh, yep. unless they got the bridge shut down for a riot. <laughs> um, seven minutes the other direction, and you're downtown. downtown. Yep. So, y'all have a favorite spot yet? Favorite restaurant? I mean, favorite bar? What moved me out here was just the. It's not really about the food. It was more about just the cultural district. I'm I'm mm -hmm. really into art. Um, Seems like that would have put you over there. Uh, was that Montgomery over there? Well, yeah, but I I don't. It's too close to the art. He wanted right. this one specifically <laughs> yeah. because of the amenities. Because amenities. of oh, the yeah, <laughs> like I mean, I have we have clients come in here all the time. To, um, like this is our office. It's, yeah, this it's not just be, where we live. It's our office. So yeah, you don't have to sell me. I've seen it. It's <laughs> beautiful. I mean, I've been to some beautiful offices, and this 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 is definitely you know a good one. So that and just the um, my favorite place is the Modern Museum. You know, I, I walk there and take the little ones there and you know, their members there. Beautiful architecture is beautiful, man. This is embarrassing. I have not been in there yet. Are you really? Kidding? How oh do you my live gosh. in Fort Worth and never been to the modern? Are you into art? I like bars. Oh, okay. No, I'm I'm into art. I'm not into art like somebody who's into arts into art. I'm into art like somebody who says they're into art. Okay. And wants to mean it, but I don't know. But I mean, this is art here. This is a form of art, sure. Yeah. And we're very good at it, aren't we? I mean, <laughs> we do our best. That's all we can do. No, I I. I'm big on music. I like going and seeing uh, local artists perform. Mm -hmm. okay. That that's great to me. Um, some of my favorite bands are my favorite bands because I've seen them play in person. Gotcha. Something comes on the radio. If I haven't seen them in person, there's no connection. Gotcha. But when I go and I see a local artist, I I know who they are. I've mm -hmm. seen them. I I don't know. That connection is important to me when I'm listening to music. So. That's a form of art that I'm really into. Okay, gotcha. Um, but as far as, like, museums and stuff, I, okay. So, Perot, have y'all been to Perot Museum in Dallas? Of course. Mm -hmm. Okay. We had a blast. We've been two or three times. Okay. Um, so, and, and I appreciated that. I like interactive exhibits and things okay. like that. So. I get it. Um, man, yeah, I wish, I wish I was more cultured. You should go there. You like food. So, when it reopens, go there. Go to the, um, to the cafe. I've heard they have a little cafe and they the do, cafe, like, a lunch thing. They have lunch, dinner, Amazing. and breakfast. It's really good food. Mm -hmm. It's five star. Well, I don't think it's rated five stars, no, but no. it's That's good. really good food. Yeah. It's a, it's a, a lot of food. healthy options too. It's not middle school lunchroom food. No, no, no. Oh. It's really good. <laughs> this is you can have drinks style. there, coffee. Yeah, you have a little mini Starbucks in there. Yeah. Too. yeah. So we go there for meetings as well, and I like it. Mm -hmm. you know, um, probably where we'll have our wedding if we. I don't, but we're not having a wedding. That's not the main thing. We're not gonna have a wedding. We're just gonna go to like You're gonna Dubai or something. But yeah. Dubai is nice. Why, yeah. why spend money on a wedding for one day and we can you know, get a fat ass ring and really nice, a nice trip. trip. Yeah. Just saying. Have y'all been to Dubai? I haven't. And I don't think nope. we haven't been either. I have always wanted to go ever since I learned Arabic. I've always wanted to go. We haven't been. We got to talk about that. Oh my gosh. Okay. You've been to Dubai? No, I haven't oh, been okay. to Dubai. <laughs> oh, the, the, oh, the, the Arabic. Arabic. I have skydive there though. Oh, oh very wow. nice. You what? Exactly. Skydived exactly. over Dubai? So I haven't been to Dubai, but. Have y'all ever checked out iFly Indoor Skydiving? Oh, they've I got, haven't been there. They've got the VR okay. headset. Oh, that's so And funny. one of the locations <laughs> is Dubai. It's so. beautiful, though. <laughs> <laughs> so it's kind of like I've been there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Have you sky, like really went skydiving before, like in real life? Have you no. done that? Are you, no. would you do that? So here's the thing. Why would you do that? Jennifer? For the <laughs> adrenaline rush. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of cool to ways to get alive. your kicks, man. <laughs> I just, I mean, I can't. 
I, I really hate it, the, the feeling when you make a bad decision and you have to own it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I do. <laughs> I, I own my mistakes. Like, yeah. I, I'm one of those people that's like, I did it. Yeah. I'll put my hand up and I'll be the first one to admit it. If I jump out of that airplane and my chute don't open, I'm not going to be mad at the guy that rigged it. You're going to be dead. I'm not going to be mad at the pilot. I'm not even going to be mad at gravity. Yeah. I'm going to be upset at myself I mean, the whole yeah. way to the ground. So yeah. I think that's, I don't want the last moments of my life being like, you stupid ass. Why did you do that? <laughs> could have gone and <laughs> that's seen. That's a great point. Could have gone and seen Matrix 4, but now I'm going to yeah. die. <laughs> We're in Matrix right now, but okay. Go ahead. So, you, yeah, what do you want to <laughs> know? Where were we? Oh, oh the Arabic. The Arabic, yeah. yes. Um, so I've spent a little bit of time in Arabic-speaking uh, countries. Oh, okay, and awesome. So I've heard it. What and countries I've been are you around in? it. I've been to Kuwait. I've been okay. to Iraq. Um, and that therefore concludes the countries that speak Arabic. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the two. Um, but it's just, it's so different from English. So and different. I cannot imagine how you would transition because, I mean, you were born into an English speaking family or. Yeah, so I grew up bilingual, so I speak English and Spanish. Okay. So um, for me, learning Arabic, I mean, it was one of the hardest things I've ever done. It was incredibly Because it's not Latin-based, right? No. And no, English and Spanish are. Yeah. So, yeah. but yeah. you know what? You being bilingual at a young age probably helped you, it, right? I think it did. And there's, you probably watched your classmates struggle like hell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, and it did. And, and they say that you get to the point where you're very comfortable with the language when you start dreaming in the language. Right. So whenever I just you start that. dreaming that, it's, you know, you're like, I got this. Oh, my God. Did you so, start dreaming in Arabic? Yeah, when I was immersed in it. And the thing about the program, so I went to DLI, um, sent all the military linguists out to DLI. What DL is DLI? Uh, it's the Defense Language Institute. Okay. It's in Monterey, California, so up north, northern California. Okay. It's a beautiful, beautiful area, uh, right by Carmel. Um, but anyway, so um, Arabic and uh, Mandarin Chinese are one of the hardest programs there. So yeah. um, I was there under two years. And um, it's it's a completely different world. So you're completely immersed in this language from day one. You have people who um, are native speakers, and they will only speak to you in the language. So you come in there, and you really want to cry. I mean, I would go home and cry sometimes, literally, because I don't know what you're saying. I'm Was just, it bad like, enough that, like, <laughs> if you needed to use the restroom, you'd be like, excuse me, where's your bathroom? And we learned that one very quickly. <laughs> 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 but, but, like, would they not tell you if... They would just speak it. No, Arabic, like. you get to the point where you know, like they, you know, they, they were very considerate about it. But it was just the experience where you know yeah. this is how serious it is. What your language, what um, your career, what you're doing, um, you know, big stuff. So, so day one of that, you're walking into this environment where there's yeah. people that only speak that language. They to only you. speak that language to how you. How defeating guess. did that feel? Oh my gosh, it was horrible. <laughs> you just felt like a failure. Like you just wanted to fall flat on your face. And how am I going to do this? And you know what? What's next? And not only that, you know, you're there for eight hours a day. It's not just, you know, oh, a couple yeah. hours a year. That is your job. So you're eight, eight hours a day there, and then you go home with two hours of homework every night. On top of that, you have all of these military obligations and formations and PT. And They're still making this, you go to formation? They are still making you go to all of that. So it was, it was a hard, hard life, hard experience, very humbled from it. Was this under the Obama administration? Yes, it was. Do you, are you mad at him for making you go to no, formation? No, not at all. While you were no. doing so much for the, was it DLI? Yes. Oh no, not God. at all. You kind of get accustomed to it. Okay, so it's not the administration's fault? No, no, no. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. just want to get that out of the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so when she's mad at you, Prince, oh. does she speak to you? No, <laughs> in not even Arabic. in Spanish, no. Oh, you just get it straight in English. She wants to make yeah. sure you understand. Yeah, and that's, <laughs> she, she, she definitely will do that. That's great. Well, you guys seem like you, you work well as a team. Does that translate well into your business? I mean, do y'all you, do have roles that y'all play for the business, or do y'all work kind of fluidly with handling everything? I mean, sometimes it is. I feel like we're, we're both very strong personalities, so one times we and like we kind of fight over who's going to you know take charge depending on what is our own individual expertise. But whenever we come together, it's like magic. It's like we just make it work and we make it flow. You don't ever have to pull rank. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, I, th I think that we are an amazing team. And we're just, there's nobody out here like us. And like specifically in this city. And it's known. Um, and it's just the beginning. It's just, I'm just excited because, I mean, when we meet people, and um, not just like we don't put up a facade, we're very genuine and real. And when we meet 
people who are just professionals, like they want to hear us and they like ask us for advice. Even like my peers who are realtors, like we have, we're, we have a different model, which I won't go into as far as our brokerage, but we have several realtors that are like top producers who, who have sold more than me who want to join us, mm-hmm. you know, and that's just, it's the truth. But it's just because of our energy and just our knowledge as far as marketing and business and, you know, just very we rare. We bring a lot to the table. Yeah, it's like very, I've only been in real estate for about two and a half years. Mm-hmm. I don't know anyone else unless it's like, um, I, I don't personally know anybody, but typically to get into like the million dollar price points, mm-hmm. you know, you have to be in the real estate industry for several years unless it's like a. Is that a caveat to that? So he's only been in industry for such a short period amount of time, but the volume of, of houses that he sold and the price point, it's, it's un- like unheard of. It's incredible. People yeah. who have been in the industry for 10 years cannot do what he does. So when we met, I was in lending and he was in real estate. So my job in lending was to um, to consult with other realtors and help them improve their business model because obviously our business came from realtors. And Prince was the only one that would actually do what I said. If I said, hey, you know, this is what I suggest to you, he would not only do it, he would like do it by 10, 10 times. Yeah. Yeah. So this is because I was just trying to like, well, we're not playing. <laughs> <laughs> this is not, but like when we first <laughs> met, we met actually at a um, real estate event. And I was there specifically to um, network with uh, home builders. And uh, there was a lot of home builders who had um, booths there because they were trying to promote their And business. where is this at? This was uh, at a, it was in Fort Worth. It was at a, called a diamond event. Oh, okay. It's an annual diamond. They were giving away diamonds. Company. Yeah, man. What? They yes. Were giving away I'm going to need that address. Shout out to Craig DeWitt, too, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Who's that? No, his name is Craig DeWitt. He's actually the jeweler who distributed that. He owns Texas Classic Insurance. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But I'm gonna get that invite next year, okay? Yeah, they, don't, they don't do it anymore, I don't think. They they have a different theme every year. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah but um, after diamonds next year, it's like how do you top that? Obstacle sticks. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, we we just spent the good stuff last year. Yeah. So the thing is, like, I'm always about business, even though you know she's very attractive and beautiful and all that. Like, it was more about the business side versus like you know really you know, um, being into her and all that, even though I was, but. You know, when we're very professional. when we're handling business, we're handling business. There's time and place for all that stuff, and you know, that's maybe the reason why we're you know, where we're at. There's a name for that, by the way. What is it? Somebody that's attracted to somebody because of their intelligence, and I can't remember what it is. She's very smart. Do you know what it is, honey? <laughs> oh, I can't think of it. Okay, it's a thing though. Okay, yeah. Just have to take my word for it. Google it later. Sapiosexual, maybe. I believe. That sounds right. Yeah, I mean, you got my vote. I think that's right. I don't have your vote. I'm silent. <laughs> kind of red, white we can pause, pause, catch some sports. Yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> whoa. Yeah, man. I did I had uh three bangs today. Okay. Oh, whoa. I've never been an energy drink guy ever. But oh. to, did you eat? to oh yeah, a little bit oh here and there. Gosh. How are you feeling? Are you like jittery? I'm starting to crash. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens. But she I can tell I, me about freaking drinking one cup of coffee and Cokehead or something. <laughs> oh, dude. Coffee at this point in my life is just, it doesn't even do anything. Really? Really? Yeah. I'm trying espresso. Uh, yeah, same. Oh, really? Yeah, that espresso is going to have to have some cocaine in it if I'm going <laughs> to feel it. So uh, my friend was like, try this, try these bangs. And I'm like, I don't yeah, drink energy them, drinks. Pop I don't. Oh Those things are huge, too. They're, they're, yeah, like, they're like Red two Bull or three size. servings. Yeah. Jesus. And she, she had two different flavors. And I'm like, oh, let me try a little bit of this. And I'm like, I kind of don't really like it, and uh, but it gave me a little bit of a boost. So the, f- the next day that I was having trouble staying awake or whatever, I went in convenience store, got one P- <laughs> pina colada. Got hooked on. I'm like pina colada. That sounds good. I got some red at the house. It was perfect. I got two. I forgot I forgot three. You said. Okay. Be careful, because I'm hooked on those bangs now. Yeah. Like I said, three today. That's probably that's not. A lot that's not normal. Yeah, drink a lot of water and be hyd- or hydrate yourself, please. <laughs> So I know you said that we weren't going to talk about cult consulting very much, but um, you got a lot going on. House yeah. of Whiting sounds like it's keeping you really busy. Uh, the cult consulting on the side. Um, do you want to talk about that at all? I mean, cult. I uh, will. Uh, this. This. It's. It's. It is something that we do on. It's not what we do on the side. It's just I'll have Jennifer kind of give you the definition of it and everything. But like for instance, we just I recently have we recently listed a, a modern farmhouse in like North Lake, beautiful home, magazine style. We even made a marketing piece of it. I wish I had one for you, but it was like a magazine of the 
like a magazine brochure of the property that we created. But um, the builder there, uh, he he had old branding, Just old real homes. Quick. You made your own pamphlet. We did, yes. For one property. Yes. Yep. Okay. Magazine. Okay. Yep. House of Whiting edition one. We need multiple. We need more listings, sort of like that, so we can have addition to. But um, so yeah, the the builder you really want that we want them over just because we're multifaceted as far as marketing and not just real estate. Mm-hmm. And so we made it, we, uh, we rebranded his logo. Tom Pano. Yeah, Tom Battle, Tom Pano Independence Custom Homes. Yep. Um, and, you know, we rebranded his logo, rebuilt his website, um, created a new sign. It's marketing a whole new look, whole new look. Yep. And, I mean, he's, he's very satisfied and has received business from it already. You look at his traffic, we're able to track his traffic on his website, and you've seen a huge spike on it. But that just gives you an idea as far as, like, our, 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 our consulting and our value is, like, it's not. It's not just real estate. It's yeah. so much more than just real estate. Right. So one stop shop. Yeah, Talk about yeah, the so cult. Like, explain. Go ahead. Then. Okay, sure. So, um, so cult is um, it's all encompassing, and the reason why we decided to go with the name cult is because culture is so vital in business, and we can talk about that later. How we incorporate art and culture with strategy to help people either bring more revenue, save some money, or just take their business off the ground. So, with House of Whiting, what we decided is we're using all of the methodology, all of the strategies that are working for management for business models and we're incorporating that with real estate along with things that we know work strategies that we know with art with music with culture with beauty fashion all of these different things together lifestyle healthy lifestyle and we really just incorporate all of that into you know for example like our open houses or events that we host and we try to bring in you know different types of crowds where it's not just one thing it's not only one um, industry, it's so many more industries bringing them together. Yeah. So anything and everything that is marketing for whatever business, whatever platform, yeah. that's what Cult Consulting would do. Exactly. So but if somebody needed help with it, that would be exactly. Yeah. 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 And the, the the thing about this is, you know, and I guess real quick. So um, when we first started, we we really started helping people for free because it was just our passion. Was you know we know what to do, what works for our specific industries, and whenever you adopt these models into under other industries, it works as well. Mm-hmm. So we started helping them out, and people saw you know a spike in the revenue and started seeing a lot more business coming in. So then mm-hmm. we really turned it into you know a company to yeah. streamline so then, our then process. You put the brakes on. Went wait a minute. Exactly. Yeah. Make money doing this. Yes, I'm good exactly. at this. Yeah. Don't like, do yeah. anything you're good at for free. No, I mean, <laughs> we, don't do anything for free, honestly, yeah. unless you support a good cause. Even like, if you're bad at it. Even, yeah. yeah even, <laughs> um, you still, your time, time is money. Right, yeah. Um, but, you know, what we did find is we were working with some people that would do, like, uh, exchange, um, you know, the services. Mm-hmm. And, okay, that's cool. You know, yeah. That will, will, you know, kind of do, like, a post for you or create a logo for you for such and such stuff. So that, that, that worked out, but then, you know, people try to take advantage of you, too. Yeah. And, you know, one thing that I've always, that always, that always sets, you know, that that's our foundation is you are, you've, whatever you perceive your value is or whatever you feel your value is, and you believe in that, no matter if it's $300 an hour and you, 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 you stre- or you, um, you're confident in that, that client will automatically respect believe that and respect you. So don't ever do undercut anything for free or undercut yourself, yourself just short. because, you know, there's competition out there. If that person wants this for that price, um, you know, have them go find somebody, especially if you're going to give it 438,000 percent, you know, you definitely want to, um, you know, value yourself and don't under devalue yourself because that's what happens a lot with just the with any business, especially starting out is you devalue yourself and people will take advantage of you and yeah. waste your time. Yeah, I think that's something that most people fall into is trying to be competitive in a market. Mm -hmm. And so they dial their their value back. And I'll I'll tell you right now, I've done it myself. I've watched other people do it. And uh, whenever you step back and and see what you did, you can be nauseated by it. But you don't, sometimes you don't see it until it's too late. Um, But yeah, sometimes just trying to keep up with everybody else, you can fall into that that pit that you're talking about of devaluing your own self. Mm-mm, don't do it. <laughs> no, 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 no. If you're starting a business or even if you're in business still and business is slow, just make some more calls or go network 
And we'll talk a little bit more about networking if you like. But yeah, definitely don't don't ever undercut yourself because you're only hurting your family and people that you you know need to take care of. Certainly, before we go any further, um, and I'll do this at the beginning of the podcast before our actual uh, audio comes in. Okay. When I do the intro, I'll make sure because you know we did the uh, intro here, but I want to make sure it's a polished product right before the podcast starts. Okay. Um, but tell everybody how they can find you. I know we've got houseofwhiting.com. Everything that you just talked about with Colt Consulting and House of Whiting, is that the place to go to, houseofwhiting.com? Everything. Yeah. Everything. ColtConsulting.com uh, is a website for Colt. I'm sorry. Uh, um, what's what's on uh, Instagram? On Instagram, we are House of Whiting on Instagram and on Facebook. Perfect. House Perfect. of Whiting. Everything is House of Whiting. Houseofwhiting.com. You're so lucky. No. Did you just hop in there and find all that stuff? Didn't have to buy it from nobody? No, no, we didn't have to no. buy it. Yeah. I, I w- uh, so several different businesses that I either did start or tried to start, I always came up with a name that was somebody already had it. Yeah. Oh, Domain no. names, yeah. social media. So for you to just jump in there and be like, House of Whiting. Oh, that's the first well, thing we Colt, look at. Colt, unfortunately, Colt was taken because it was somebody, I think, in England. Was forgot what kind Korean of company pop. they. Oh, it was a, yeah, it was a Korean pop. Uh, K pop. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, it was that, yeah. <laughs> so they have that Instagram. Uh, tag but we have power of the cold but again i mean the way that we're doing cold is more word of mouth and just it's a secret society it's a cult it's i feel like cult. with cult yeah. it's like a 10-year process are in the making so. are y'all gonna get rings like you know like the wedding rings no like uh what's, what's it uh, oh initiation rings yeah like s- the skulls you know the skulls oh, they all had rings and that's how you knew they were the Skulls. No. <laughs> I mean, if it's a cult, you got to have some, like a tattoo or a ring well, or something. Again, like marketing and just the experience is, is very uh, important to us and just to feel like the, the experience for our clients. Yeah. So we go out as far as um, the things that we provide for our clients, you know, when they, um, you know, do business with us. Like, you just imagine, just think about opening up a Samsung. Uh, you're an Apple guy, right? No. How dare <laughs> you? Android? No. Are you serious? I have currently the LG uh, Fin Q, and I love it. It's got two screens. How many, screen, how many screens does your phone have? I don't, I don't, I don't <laughs> use to make calls and check my email. But seriously. I, I had I had the Apple iPhone 3. Okay. Well, dang, that was a long time ago. Yeah. But look, but still, but look. <laughs> oh, nice. So they still gave you that experience, though, when you like, just imagine the, little white the, the box packaging, open the, up. the quality of that packaging versus the quality of the packaging that maybe you opened up with your LG. It it's wasn't just bad. the experience. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the experience, man. And I think about okay, it does think about the Apple Store when you walk in there? Just think about the culture there. So I've never What's actually been in an oh, Apple Store, but I do see the line wrapped around yeah. the building. Yeah. So that's my experience. I, and I've never understood why the <laughs> hell there's so many people in that. Because Apple store. there's only one damn store, dude. <laughs> but what do you need to do there? I go in there and in and out. They just hang out there. Yeah, that's it's the weird. culture. Yeah. That's, that's what weird. I'm trying to. But you're to right. You. You're right. They did an excellent job marketing. Mm-hmm. It, 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 anytime marketing comes up, Apple. The product is always talked about it's because the they did a great job marketing. Right, it's the experience that you feel just from even opening up that, getting your package and yeah. opening that up. For and sure, that's that's how we, you know, that's what we, gra- you know, that's what we do for our clients as well. We yeah. invest heavily in our marketing and our brand, and a lot of people aren't willing to do that, so they, they know what it takes, but or they, they are not brand. willing. Do you think exactly. it's because they just don't know what they're doing? In regards to that? Sometimes they don't know. Sometimes they don't care. And sometimes... They don't see how important it is. Right. They yeah. don't see the value. That and also sometimes they may not want to be different or they're afraid to be different. Think outside the box because of such and such. What, right. What other, you know, would think about them. Yeah. Or, you know, and that's 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 unfortunate because in the, in the city of Dallas, there's 26,000 real estate agents. So I'll let that sink in, you know. Is that just, including Fort Worth? Yes. 26,000 26, registered yes. agents. Yes. And then like 13,000 people that are doing it on the low. I don't know exactly the percentage, but I could tell you now that the average realtor only makes, what was it, 32,000? Jesus. <laughs> it's 32,000 a year. That's and not. And that's like 90, I don't want to be like, so it's like over it's over 90 percent jesus there's a Christ. small percentile that makes over 35 or is that 30, because they're just doing it like part-time or some some of them are doing it part-time some of them so typically in real estate it takes about six months to be um to close your first transaction so not everybody is after gonna, you get your license after you get your license it takes you about six months that's just that test is average. no joke right it's it's three months 
It's, I mean, yeah. It he, took me three months before I saw him. This is just an average. I mean, it's exceptional. Well, no, no. But, no. but I mean, that's that a is long a statistic, time. though. That's a right? long time. It is a long time. And you have to have money invested in yourself and in your business before you're able to do that because you sure. cannot sustain yourself. Right. If, you know, you're just living from, you know, one deal to the next, you have to have a... Yeah. Yeah, and people think that, you know... Um, <laughs> I mean, they think it's easy. They think it's, you know, they don't see all the work behind. They don't. That's, that's the thing with most of that. Yeah. There's industries that people go into because they see somebody else driving that nice car, wearing that nice suit. Yeah. Got the girlfriend that's 10 years younger. Yeah. But only two years younger. <laughs> they don't see all the work that went into getting all that frivolous stuff. Right. Yeah. I mean, we. this is what we breathe. We were up. The grind, I, the I, hustle, like the stress, the sleepless yeah. nights. They don't see any I mean, of that. like, think about... We do all the marketing, so I mean, just think about how much time the average person spends there on their phone on Facebook. You know, we do the same thing, but we're actually just marketing on Facebook, strategic about it on Instagram. That stuff takes a long. You know how hard it is to make a freaking Instagram and like to really keep that consistent. <laughs> oh my goodness, it's it's like I've got one, but I I don't think I do it as much as you do. Man, doesn't sound like it's it's work. It really is, and to really figure out the algorithm every time. All that. I mean, we have 33,000 followers on there. Damn. What? Okay. <laughs> House of Whiting. Go ahead. Uh, yeah. House, House of Whiting, Whiting on, Instagram. on Instagram. Okay, cool. Well, guys, I'm going to need to start wrapping it up here. Okay. Um, I want you guys to know that you are always welcome to come on the podcast. So if there's something crazy going on, let me know. Okay. And we'll set this thing up. Um you know, it doesn't have to be anything particular either. If y'all just want to kick back and do a podcast, okay. okay. We have a um, welcome. we have a we were pitched a like a reality show uh, from a videographer last week. I'm not sure exactly how that's going. to I mean, we'll, we'll see how that goes. This is how the horror movie starts. No, no, no. This is. We'll a, keep I've you been, updated. Been, Are they going to invite you out to a cabin? No, no. I've been using <laughs> is this a remote location? <laughs> this is strictly for real estate and just a lifestyle thing. And that's what um, he told you. Uh, I know. Them, <laughs> okay, I'll, okay. Let me, let me not. Let me not <laughs> go there. Cause I was, but no, um, no. Nah, we're but we have we have something like that going. So cool. Cool. We could definitely, um, yeah, you know, have a podcast going on, maybe on one of the scenes or something. For like that. sure. Figure yeah. Out. Be cool. That would be cool. Mm -hmm. Don't forget about me. No, we and we got to talk about that thirty-three thousand on Instagram because uh, I might need some tips. Yeah, absolutely. I just so look, I'm thirty-five. I'm thirty-five. I'll be thirty-five tomorrow. All right. So Instagram has been like a really hard transition for me. I don't know why, but I'm a Facebook guy. Mm -hmm. Before that, I boycotted Facebook for like the first five years. I was like, I'm a MySpace guy. Yeah. <laughs> I just do MySpace. Same here. And then uh, Same you know here. had to had to get with the. The times and yeah. did Facebook, and now I'm trying to figure out Instagram, Twitter, and somebody showed me TikTok, TikTok the other yep. day, <laughs> and I was like, "Get that away from me! Okay. I don't need any TikTok." And then they showed me, and I was like, "I can't stop looking at TikTok." <laughs> I mean, TikTok is actually the new Instagram, man. Damn it! It's the new. I'm Instagram. just now figuring out. It's okay. Instagram. Like this book right here. I mean, this book right here was. I think Did you he, write that book. No, this is Gary Vaynerchuk, man. Okay. He's oh, like, okay. talk yeah. about the title. What is it's it called? Jab, jab, right hook. Okay. Jab, 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 right hook. So by Gary Vaynerchuk. Yeah. Is that gonna tell me how to Instagram better? Uh, it will give you an insight as far as uh, yeah, like strategies on what to do. Because the thing is, is that if you think about, if you look up real estate companies or real estate agents that are on Instagram, mm -hmm. what are you gonna see mostly? Dollar signs. I'm going to see dollar signs. Dollar signs or titties. Okay. Yeah. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> or ass. That's what you see. Like, you'll see houses or, or titties. That's what you typically see. Or, you know, like most women that are, um, that are, that are real estate agents that are like, have a lot of followers. Mm -hmm. It's not because of the product that they sell. It's because of their, what they're, they what they're exposing. Yeah. They're selling yeah. themselves. But you have to mix that in. And so the ones that are really good at it, they mix it in. That's why they have a lot of followers and they're engaged. Their yeah. engagement, they're getting a business from it. So that's what this talks about is like, you know, don't just show a lot of houses on there, you know, or if you're, you're a podcast on like on Facebook, don't just talk about your podcast every freaking day, like yeah. five posts about it. Yeah. Do talk about like personal stuff, like your family and all that, be a likable person and all that, but genuine, of course. Yeah. But, and then hit them with the right hook. Get some personality with, in there. With your, with your business. And yeah. then, you know, hey, doing this today with this, like uh, doing this podcast today with this company. And, you know, boom, hit them with the link 
after like you know the next day. Yeah. But throw some other personal stuff in there to get likes. Have y'all had a chance to look at my Instagram yet? No, man. I haven't. I, I no. just I, I Facebook, just I put the thing up. Instagram. <laughs> and uh, I'm I'm already kind of doing some stuff like what you're talking about. Putting some per- it starts yes. off with me eating a cheeseburger. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, whatever create, whatever makes you, you know, our personality yeah. is like, you know, we're lifestyle and I mean, like, I, have you been to our Instagram? No, I haven't. Okay. So, Call me. I mean, you know, all high end photos, professional photos, but it's us, you know, and her, you know, obviously like, look at this, she got like 900 likes mm-hmm. and I post one of me and I get freaking nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just telling you, man, this all is right. how it works. She's part of the formula. Exactly. How you doing? <laughs> Exactly. There was a guy walking by. I had to say hi. For those of you uh, just listening at home, it was a man in athletic gear carrying a smoothie. <laughs> All right. Well, Jennifer Prince, I cannot thank you enough. Oh yeah. Thank you. And, no uh, let's do this it again. I mean, I'm I'm going to knock out these first ten episodes, okay. get those out distributed, and then uh, let's sit down again soon. You're right here. We're right here. Yeah. Let's set up a time as we did before. We're always open to that. Y'all got a sweet spot here. Well, next time, maybe we can go to the pool. I don't know. We'll figure it out. All right. Fort Worth Root listeners, thank you so much for listening. Later, guys. All Bye. right. Bye.